Originally announced all the way back at E3 2018, it's fair to say that Starfield has been a long time coming. Described as the first new universe from Skyrim developer Bethesda Game Studios in over 25 years, Starfield is an action RPG that allows players to inhabit a huge galaxy as an interstellar explorer. But despite being the biggest game of the year, many questions about Starfield remain. Is it too big? What do you actually do in it? And was it worth the five-year wait? To help me answer these questions, I'm joined by Deputy Editor Alice Bell, who has been playing the game on Xbox for review. Hello, Alice. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you. As I always say, it's always a pleasure to be here. So, I mean, the first question I need to ask is, what are your general thoughts about Starfield? I haven't played loads yet, so it's a very big game. It's mm. fine. <laughs> 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 I thought it was a bit overhyped pre-release so I mm. was never that excited for it and I know that will make people mad but um, it's a very common game it's very big most of the planets are boring and empty and that's fine some of them do have towns and stuff on them that are the more sort of authored areas and those are more interesting mm. as always I wish games were smaller because then you can focus more on doing the good bits it's a Bethesda game it's yeah. a Bethesda game it's a new Bethesda game. They have not deviated from the Bethesda game format. So if you're hoping for a brave new world, this ain't it. It has grey rocks uh, and mid-brown rocks and it has some green rocks. It has a few of the planets are meant to be a bit more, you know, interesting to look at. So there's one that's mm -hmm. like a resort planet that's got red palm trees and kind of volcanic looking rocks and stuff. But they're all, especially the, the proc gen ones, they're mostly similar and the points of interest on them aren't gonna light up your life i don't think but it okay if you played a bethesda game starfield's quite like that <laughs> well it, it's it's an interesting point though isn't it because for many people that that is all they want to hear right hmm. is it's another bethesda game but i i do get that maybe if you're tired of bethesda games or you're expecting something earth shatteringly different what i'm hearing is this ain't it chief no and that that again is fine i just i think part of my muted reaction to it is because i just got a bit mm. exhausted by the the hype cycle this is a bit i mean i should be talking about the game this is not the game itself but you know it's got all the bethesda stuff it's got very similar factions to other bethesda games it's got you know mm. you've got your libertarian mud cowboys and you've got your white architecture <laughs> medicare fascists you know you've got like all that kind of stuff <laughs> You know, it's got Bethesda floaty shooting, which Nate once mm -hmm. described in his Fallout 76 review as like flicking packing peanuts at Jason Momoa. <laughs> it's got... <laughs> That's so good. It's It's got very, you know, it's got some very nice detailed environments. Uh, mm. You know, the, some of the cities have nice stuff, but then you've also it's also got the slightly you know bethesda janky people so they still do that you click on someone and then they will turn to face you and then it zooms on their torso you know all incredible. that incredible yep perfect there's you know some slight jank around people like you know children look about 40 and mm. someone will say you know oh over there is the thing and they will not point or they will be in completely a different area because you'd have to talk to them while they were walking somewhere so they're sort of indicating a quest <laughs> in somewhere they are not that sort of stuff that's why it's a really big game mm -hmm. but it's quite it's quite fun you know you yeah the main quest is that you join a sort of indiana jones society Called constellation okay. who their thing is like find a new start discovery exploration adventure and they've found some they're called artifacts they're little sort of jigsaw pieces that float together to form a sort of helix uh, or like a, it's almost like a an atom you know a drawing of an atom where you have the nucleus and then you have all the stuff flying around it a little yeah. bit like that and you're sort of like tracking down more of them and finding out what it is and like is it aliens i don't know because there aren't everyone's a human apart from the proc gen animals on planets mm. so there are no technical people you can have sex with or anything like that it's just human Boo. factions and no <laughs> so far anyway like i say i've got a lot more galaxy yeah. to explore it's the second video in a row where the conversation about shagging tentacle I monsters know. Has come up. so <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> hope this doesn't awaken anything in me. <laughs> so it is a competent video game but i don't 
I, do you know, I think the thing that has surprised me a little bit is there isn't really any whimsy or levity, really. Not in the way that, oh. you know, Skyrim and Fallout had some more funny or sort of, yeah, yeah. lighter things. It's all quite serious. It takes itself quite seriously, I think. There's, mm. you know, even the robot isn't really that. It's not fun. It's not really funny. It's not a funny robot, you know. Right, okay. So it's quite straight faced. And I was expecting a little bit more fun in the sense of like, you know, it's entertaining, but I was expecting it to be a bit more fun in the sense of like, you know, wacky mm. people. But like, there's not really. There's, you know, yeah. even the cowboy character who's an optional mate for you, his main thing is that he's a single dad, you know, which is, oh. which, you know, fine. But like, he's not like a root and tootin' cowboy, you know? <laughs> Not that I'm saying every character has to be, you know, flanderized. Yeah, but there was always, you're right, there was always the levity of, of previous Bethesda games was part of the reason why they were so en endearing and it sort of like gave them a bit of soul, right? Yeah, there's just, there's no kind of arrow to the knee equivalent, I would say. Although I know that became a meme because you heard it so often, but there's nothing sort of a bit mm. idiosyncratic like that. I don't think personally, again, okay. caveat, I, you know still a lot more to see and the other thing is i think it's a very big game but it feels in some ways smaller than skyrim because i loved skyrim and skyrim yeah. sort of has very few loading screens mm. because it's much smaller that's fine but like you basically are fast traveling to the authored locations on planets Mm -hmm. landing talking to the person there and then fast traveling somewhere else again because right, okay. you can go for walks around planets but there's not really much point unless it's a main quest line or like a you know there is definitely something here there's not really a lot going on so it's a lot of loading screens between mid-sized areas so it makes everything mm. feel a little bit smaller than somewhere where you can just walk about and f see what's going on yeah it does sound way less cohesive than Skyrim in that sense. If you are constantly looking at loading screens in between mm. chunks of world, is space fully explorable, or is it also loaded in in chunks? Sort sort of both. So you'll go and you'll be flying around, you know, a planet or whatever, and you can mm -hmm. fly around the planet. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to, you could fly manually to like the next mission, I believe. But like. There's not really a point doing that because it will take you so long. Right, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I think you can, but I have not tried to manually fly to the next planet along kind of thing. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I might give it a go, but it would take ah, like quite a long time because especially early on, your ship isn't that good. Yeah, okay. The sh ship stuff was quite a big thing as well, the modular ship stuff. I've engaged with that a bit. I haven't built my own Barbie dream house fully but you it's interesting in the combat which is quite fun it's a bit the star wars one tie fighter maybe so you oh, float yeah. yeah you're flying about and you have a laser for shields and then you have a you know concussive uh, like a, a explosive cannon and missiles and you can lock on and as you're flying around you can designate different chunks of energy from your reactor so how good your reactor is is how much energy you can sort of fire up in different sections of your ship so you could mm. remove stuff from like your essentially your jump drive which allows you to jump between galaxies and put mm. more into your shields if you're in a fight that kind of thing which mm. is quite which is quite fun i quite like that yeah it's quite yeah it sounds a bit like faster than light yeah i think yeah. It's, it's another game that has a lot of different aspects to it and you can choose to get really into the flying if you mm. want or the ship building if you want but you don't have to which is, hmm. I sort of appreciate that. I, w I wouldn't have said it's the, you know, second coming of video games. In, yeah. In the sense that it's not, it's just a, a much bigger, you know, Bethesda game, which hmm. again, you know, should we have expected anything else, really? You know? Well, yeah, quite, right. And I do wonder if, if partly, I always think that the best move Bethesda ever pulled was unveiling Fallout 4 three or four months before yeah. it was out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then no one could expect more from that game mm -hmm. than what they delivered because they mm -hmm. didn't have time for the imagination to run. You know, it's it's wild that they announced this in 2018. I get why it's taken them so long. Mm -hmm. The fact they announced Elder Scrolls 6 at the same time is a conversation <laughs> for another day. But it, it honestly, it... 
as someone who really likes Bethesda games because I sort of just sit on the couch at the end of a long day and just disassociate to some mm. nice ambient tunes and take part in some low energy combat this sounds like I'll probably get a pretty decent time out of it I might never finish it yeah it sounds sounds just like good it's good yeah it's not I was try, it's not a bad video game but I don't think it's exciting me yeah. in in the way that like because I'm I'm stoked for a new Elder Scrolls game but yeah. the, I just Starfield doesn't excite me because I think it's just a bit it's just a bit too serious a bit too serious mm. and I get the point you know people have said to me that well we should be excited for space for what it is and not for what you know it isn't but uh, at the same time I feel like you can imagine that humanity would have done more than recreate the same faction types from <laughs> Fallout 4 you know <laughs> And it's, but I'm not, I'm not having a bad time with it, but it's a bit like, do you know, when you're watching a sitcom and it's fine, and and when you yeah. laugh, you go, <laughs> like you, oh. the exhale oh, yeah. out the nose, like it's that level of, it's all right for me. But okay, do you know, the main quest line is heating up currently for me, so it could get more exciting. I don't want to say that it's a bad game. I just think it's, it's a new Bethesda IP. <laughs> That's, that's a quote for the box right there. <laughs> it's a new game by Bethesda. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. So to wrap this up with the the question that's that's in the spicy YouTube title, was it worth the wait? I think I sort of already know your answer to this. I mean, I, like, no, but I no, if you have been waiting for it for since it was announced, you know, for mm -hmm. five years or however long it's been. And no, if you've built you know the last sort of 80 months of your life i've been really excited for this game I, but i think if you're the sort of person who has sent me angry messages on social media because i am not excited for this game then you're not listening to me anyway so. <laughs> true yeah just have a just have just have a cup of tea and a, a custard cream yeah still just buy enjoy it the game. enjoy the game yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you can get it on game pass for like eight pound a month exactly do you know what Perfect Game Pass game, 100%. Really, yeah. if I got this on Game Pass, I would be having the best time. Yeah. So that that is probably the answer that most people want to hear then. There if you, you go. subscribe to Game Pass, you just get it. Have fun with it. Play it. The, the, the financial investment to experience this game in its entirety can be quite low if you choose for it to be. Is that the review? Is that? <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, always a treat to have you on the channel. If you are playing Starfield or you're excited to play Starfield, let us know why in the comments. Yeah, all right, that's enough then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>